So putting together a chatbot user interface. These are the web forms we're very much used to. And you look at the uh, field types, request type, timeline, informations, and reference fields. So we're going to take these input fields and make them conversational. So you can see on the left, we've listed the request type, timeline, etc. And on the right, we have the dialogue that's proper for our conversation. And so chatbots afford us uh, that ability to make web forms and move beyond just input fields to be filled out. So one of the up and coming and has been up and coming technologies um, for artificial intelligence chatbots is RiveScript. It's an open source project. It's very extensible and it's got a, a nice community always willing to help. And so this gives us pretty much everything we need to convert those input fields into a conversation. So I'll let you go into their GitHub repo and clone the code. And we're going to focus on the web client, which will allow us to modify with CSS and HTML. So go ahead and run the grunt server once you've cloned that. As you can see here, uh, we'll have it launched in just a second. And voila, it's just a regular chat window that gives us the ability to take with the user inputs. So if you open up the example files, the web client folder, you notice there's a couple of HTML files, which is where that file is served from. However, there's a brain folder, and RiseScript uses the proper low-level AI construct, construct of putting the dialogue in brain files, right? Think of it as the brain for the robot or the chatbot. So we're going to create a new file, and first we'll just list it here as part of the other um, artificial intelligence functionality in these write files. So just add, we'll just add another file uh, inside of the brain folder here, we'll call it CDSS. We'll CDSS being the name uh, for uh, the client here that we built this for, where this project is coming from. Um, so then we'll just add that proper file in the brain folder, and um, we'll just call it again CDSS.rive. Now this is crucial uh, for you to extend uh, the off-the-shelf um, AI uh, chatbot functionality, so we'll just add a write file here. I will begin by declaring the version. In this case, it is 2.0, so that will be exclamation and version 2.0. And I'll go ahead and add that here. Now, RiseScript uses what are called triggers, which is how we capture. Uh, what the user types into the chat window or their interaction or it could be a voice command. So that'll be the plus sign. We'll just start with hello just to taste test our proof of concept. And if you remember that project type input field, um, we'll just say how can we help. Uh, and now we'll use the wildcard symbol that you see here, which is the asterisk, which we're not parsing any of the input that gets entered or, or set by the user. And then RiceScript uses what are called connectors which are these um, um, percent signs that you see here. So we want to connect what was previously asked. And so we just type in, how can we help uh, with uh, all lowercase and no punctuation? And now we'll have the response, right, which is the minus sign. So we'll capture uh, what was said in, with the set command, which is a variable, and we'll call it areas, right, which is the project type. We'll call it areas and capture that. Uh, variable, the initial variable, uh, which would be useful for later when we submit to a web service. So now we uh, give a new response to that uh, data that we captured or that command. And so we want to ask a couple of questions. And again, we use the wildcard. We're not, we're just testing our proof of concept here. And again, the connector will be, sure, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Right, following the uh, the logic here, right? We link, we connect what was previously said uh, with that uh, percent sign, which I'll add here. And so we'll be sure. Do you mind if I ask a couple of questions again? All lowercase, no punctuation. And then uh, we'll move on to the next question, which if you remember was the timeline question. So we can give a more intuitive response or more normal conversation, conversation response 
Uh, we can ask, how soon do I need to get started? Right, so I'll just type that here. And so you followed the logic, right? Uh, with the connectors and the triggers. And so um, we'll just put a trigger here to capture anything, anything and everything. And then um, we'll connect now with a percent sign the how soon do I need to start this request. And again, all lowercase, no capitalization. All right, so as I type this, I um, hope you can start to see a pattern um, with the trigger, connector, and response. That is the basic logic of, of uh, artificial intelligence um, with RiceScript. And again, now we want to capture this variable, which is the timeline. So we'll just call it when. We want to keep our variable names simple, and this will be another variable we'll reinitialize. And uh, now we can serve the next question. And if you remember, um, we want to get um, the budget information. So we'll, instead of just saying budget and have an input uh, number field, um, we can just have a question like you would ask a consultant or, or a friend or another human. And so I fill out the rest of the form, and uh, you can see that we move through the form, we progress through the budget, uh, the uh, summary, some further instructions, also the referral. Right? And it's nice that um, we were able to use or group together all the variables, all those wildcards or variables we captured and put out a response, as well as RiceScript allows us to use um, pretty good, um, robust, normal JavaScript and be able to submit those responses as a set of parameters to a URL or a web service. So this is how you would ingest those responses to some kind of data acquisition system or um, web service or any other thing that you're utilizing. And at the end, we can just, um, um, you know, just greet out the response. So let's test it out. If you remember, uh, the initial with the initial trigger was hello. The how can we help was the project type. So someone will, instead of choosing UX design work, uh, we can enable the conversation. I need uh, this kind of work done. The next question was more details. And uh, the timeline. So someone would just verbosely say within three months, and the rough idea of the budget then instead of someone um, you know, just typing in or selecting a regular drop-down, they can actually type in more details so we can parse through that data. And uh, along with an additional, additional description, uh, we will have more information that uh, we can capture right through the conversation with the chatbot. And then the last piece was the referral question. So then we're able to um, put out a summary and we get the confirmation and then we move on. So as you can see now, it's uh, we can got to prove a concept, but now we can um, hack away at the CSS and HTML files provided and take the proof of concept even further. So we have some UI design that we're interested in, not just the basic off the shelf write script. So I heard a lot about SVG icons. Maybe we can insert a couple of these SVG icons, which I have saved that we can add uh, to the form field to kind of dress it up a bit so that goes in these places in the HTML file as well as some of the uh, JavaScript that's appending uh, icons and visual elements to the response so we'll add that there and now we can test our form again the trigger with hello and now we're starting to dress it up and again you can put responsive classes emulate it right to some HTML5 um, native app as well and so we can actually make use of uh, set timeout features of function to create the illusion of having this conversation over time and space. As we all know, responses don't happen immediately. There'll be some kind of loader graphic, right? As people are out in the field or in the real world, so we can add this yes, um, SVG animation. And it, the illusion becomes more real, right? And we're able to test our proof of concept chatbot. And that is... Um, the good part here that it's all JavaScript, it's all technology that we're all very useful, we're all very used to. And again, um, all that happens here, right? All that responses gets added in. Thank you.